Hello, uh, welcome to Captain Dorja's Armory. This is Captain Dorja. Um, to start things off, I just want to say uh, update 8.6 is going to drop real soon. So uh, what I'm going to be doing with my replays is I'm going to finish off the few that I have left from 8.5 that I thought were noteworthy. Um, after I've done that, I am I've got a another series of like retarded things that have happened that I want to make into another like herpaderp video and uh, this one this herpaderp video will be better than the last herpaderp video because the last herpaderp video was like 50% herpaderp 50% why I hate the T95 and this one is pretty much entirely herpaderp and there may even potentially be one or two random things tossed in from War Thunder but I don't think so if uh, anything ridiculous happens in that I might include it just for the walls. And uh, once the herpaderp is completed, um, I've got stuff from the 8.6 test server that I want to put up, but since none of that has to do, honestly, with anything new for 8.6, um, I don't think it's a big deal that it'll be out after 8.6 releases. Uh, it's just stuff like my impression on vehicles that I've never played before that I thought was really interesting. Um, <clears throat> But right now we're going to be uh, we're going to be taking a look at this beast. This is the Tier Eight French Tankster, the AMX ACMLE 1948. Uh, this this is a really good TD. I've only had it for a little while. Only have a few battles in it. Uh, the only upgrades I have are I have the radio, I have the tracks, I have the engine, and I have the 100 millimeter gun from the Tier Seven. And uh, in the replay, I think I didn't even have the tracks, so I just had radio engine middle gun. And uh, this this tank destroyer is already really, really awesome. Uh, I'll quickly talk a little bit about why this tank destroyer is so good. Um, first of all, I'll point out I have 100% crew, but they're not uh, they're not completed with their first skill training yet. So I'm not sure why this guy's so far behind, but he is. Oh right, because this thing has two gunners for some reason. And the 46 doesn't, so yeah. New gunner, he's catching up. My commander doesn't have six cents yet, so I don't know when I'm being detected and when I'm not. I've retrained almost all my crews in this game to put six cents as the first skill on the commander, so I've gotten really used to, to knowing when I'm detected. So uh, I'm beginning to realize how much of a how much of a benefit you get from six cents, and it, it feels kind of naked driving a tank, especially like this where you don't know when you've been detected yet, like for certain. A um, couple of things that I want to point out. For equipment down here right now, I have a gun rammer, binoculars, and a camo net. I have been playing this TD a lot more in the standard tank destroyer role, um, where you play it as a sort of a defensive ambusher type, type, type vehicle. Um, and then once... Uh, once the tide of the battle is turned in favor of my team, then I go on. Then I go on the offense. Um, I don't have any premium shells. I don't think this tank needs it. Uh, the the only thing I really want to talk about much more is the armor and the gun, real quick. The this tank tank destroyer gets some some good gun selections. Um, this is the gun I have mounted, the 100 millimeter SA 47 AC. Uh, it is the tank destroyer version of the gun on the AMX 5100, and I believe the Lorraine 40T also uses the tank version of this gun. Uh, you unlock this gun in the tank store form on the Tier 7 ACMLE 1946, and you can immediately mount it onto the 1948, which is good. The fully upgraded gun for the 1948 is the 120mm SA46 AC. As you can see, this is the gun of the AMX 50 Fosh not the 50 Fosh 155, but the Tier 9 Fosh. This is the same gun, it's a tank screw version of the gun used on the AMX 5120. Um, so this is a really good gun, but I don't have it unlocked yet. But I want to point out a couple of things about the two guns. First of all, you have a very, very good rate of fire on the 100 mil, 7.5 rounds a minute versus 5.7 on the 120. But 5.7 millimeter or rounds per minute for a for a gun like this, it's still a pretty decent rate of fire. 
The penetration on the 100 millimeter is 232 versus the 267 on the on the uh, 120 mil. Now, uh, 232 penetration is pretty good on a tier eight vehicle. It's about what most tier eight heavy tanks have, and more than quite a few of the tier eight heavies. Um, 267 pen on a tier eight is fantastic. It's absolutely amazing. It's better than the T34 and the T28, which have some of the highest penetrating guns at tier 8. So that's a really good average penetration roll. Uh, it basically means you'd be able to pen anything you would ever come against all the time. You, you'd still have to aim for weak spots on tier 10s, but with the 100mm gun, even at frontal weak spots on some of the tier 10s, you're going to have problems that this thing won't have because of its higher pen. Uh, next, the alpha damage, 300 alpha with the 100 millimeter versus 400 with the 120. Uh, that's kind of a big, kind of a big increase. But the rate of fire on the 100 millimeter helps compensate for the lower alpha damage. Uh, very comparable accuracy on the two guns, 3.4 seconds versus, or not 3.4 seconds, 0.34 on the 100 and 0.33 on the 120. So they're both very accurate. Uh, but here's kind of the here's the kicker: um, the aiming times. The 100 millimeter, when you use it on the AC48, has a 2.3 second aiming time, and the 120 millimeter has a 2.9 second aiming time. That's a pretty long aiming time, and this tank server does not have a very wide gun arc. In common with most of the French tank destroyers, once you get past the tier 5, your gun arc is really narrow. Um, any fans of the Mighty Jingles will know that his he advocates that on the French tank destroyers, you do not use the top gun, but you use the one below it. Um, on the ARL V39, for example, you can use a 105mm gun, or you can use the 90mm DCA45. The DCA45 has higher penetration, more accurate, lower, uh, lower alpha damage, and longer aiming time. The 105mm has less penetration, but plenty to do the job. But it aims so much faster that it's a lot easier to, to actually aim on a target before they get out of your firing arc, and you can actually put out more damage with it. Plus, it also has higher alpha damage and higher damage per minute. So on the V39, I really think that uh, that 105mm, even though it's the number 2 top gun, is actually superior. Um, on the AC48, uh, you can either use the DCAA45 or this 100mm. Or on the AC-46, I mean. And on the AC-46, I actually went with the 100mm because I wanted the additional alpha damage and the penetration of being in a tier, being in a tier 7 tank destroyer where you might encounter tier 9s, only putting out 240 damage per hit with 212 penetration. I thought that was a real handicap, so I was running the 100mm for the extra damage and the extra penetration. Even though you lose quite a lot of rate of fire and the aiming time is longer, I did have problems occasionally where targets would drive past me before I could fully aim on them because I had the slower aiming time. I think that will be an issue with this 120mm gun. Um, and I think the damage per minute and the penetration of this 100mm is actually enough so that it's probably better actually to run this gun than this one. But since you need to unlock the 120mm in order to get to the Fosh, I will be unlocking the 120mm, and I will be using it. Because who knows? You never know until you try it. Right now, I'm liking the 100mm, but I might really like the 120 And there are plenty of other good players out there who advocate for the 120 over the 100mm. Uh, anyone who watches a Quickie Baby, Quickie Baby uses the 120mm on his AC-46. 48 rather because of the additional damage and penetration so it's a six of one half dozen of the other now we're gonna real quick hit the armor on this and then we'll get her into battle basically these french tank destroyers once you get to the tier seven their front armor is is really troll uh, this tank's 150 millimeter stick on the front the gun mantlet is very bouncy the front armor is very bouncy and it's it's quite thick and it's well sloped and angled you have some serious weak points on it. This is a weak spot, this is a weak spot, and this is a huge weak spot. So it's a little frustrating that you have such good front armor, and with the terribly low health of this tank, you really need that good front armor. 
but then sitting on top of it you have massive massive weak spots lastly the side armor and the rear armor on this thing is absolutely garbage you don't want to get side shot at all you basically can't dangle this tank because if you angle it really very much at all you get hit and they pin what you do is you kind of you want to sort of waggle it like this when somebody's about to shoot you because they're they're probably not going to get the sides but they'll get angling on the front in an unpredictable manner that they can't really compensate for and increases chances of gun mantle hits which are basically an auto bounce so now we've been in the garage with the ac48 for quite a while let's uh let's hop her into battle and and see her blow stuff up so here we are with the ACMLE 1948 Tier 8 French Tank Destroyer. We're in a standard battle on the map highway. Um, honestly, not a huge fan of this map. It's alright, but I really don't like it that much. But uh, this match looks like it's going to be alright. You can see from the team list, this is a very, very Tier 8 dominated map. Um, which is kind of nice. Uh, don't have to worry about stuff like E75s and whatnot. But at the same time, you know, there's really no like little guys to pick on either, which sometimes can be a problem. Uh, another thing that was that was uh, good to see from looking at the team list is that the enemy team doesn't have very many medium tanks, which means they're probably not going to push a lot through the field. Uh, as you can see, our Yag Panther driver just said in chat, they'll send eight, ten, eight out of ten city, if me thinks, and uh, me thinks the exact same thing. But they're not going to be completely stupid. They'll have people in the field. So uh, I'm going to go and take an Overwatch position for the field, where I can also put flank shots into the city. Now, me driving over here, you can see a little bit of the agility of this tank destroyer. It is very fast, very agile, even with the engine and tracks that you get from the previous vehicle. And I like this position a lot for a tank destroyer on this map because I think it's very flexible. You're, uh, you're providing mid coverage, but if you have a good long range sniper vehicle, you can also provide fire support into the city on the flank. You have to move over some to the left in order to do the fire support, but it's definitely an option. Your only real vulnerability in this position is twofold. Uh, when you get spotted, you're very, very exposed to artillery, especially with a vehicle like the 1948, which due to its weak armor everywhere but the front and its large top profile, this tank destroyer is fairly prone to artillery in the first place. So uh, you can see here, I'm not detecting anyone in the field, so I moved just close enough that I can actually see these enemies, and it's time to start doing flank fire. The other weakness of that position that I had just a minute ago is that if an enemy medium tank can get under the bridge, uh, they can spot you really easily and there's not a lot you can do about it. So that's definitely a drawback. You can see the high rate of fire and uh, good aiming time and good accuracy of this gun as we fire on these, uh, the flank of these enemy tanks. I've already hit three separate tanks and done over 900 damage. What I'm trying to do here is I'm not trying to knock out any single tank. Um, I'm basically taking shots of opportunity at the biggest target I can find. And what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm just trying to soften the enemy up before they get into the main battle. And uh, it is working. We've already put out 1,500 damage. That Tiger II doesn't even know where I am. I've blown his track off twice. Uh, he's just sitting complete oblivious side on to me, and I'm punishing him for it. This is a time when I basically do decide to focus on a kill. Until this IS starts making a run. Because... I don't want this IS to get close enough to me for him to be able to detect me. So I'm going to focus on killing this IS. And once this IS is down, it'll either be switching onto the Lerva, which you can see over in the field, or it'll be continuing the flanking fire. Now you can see the uh, gun of this tank has no problem with the IS. I did actually bounce one shot off of him, but uh, the IS just gets the occasional bounce like that. And speaking of bounces, 
My shot on the T-34 hits the front of his turret and bounces off. Now right there you can see a shot into my side from the Lerva, low damage roll which was good, but he knocked out my engine which was bad, so I've repair kitted. I've already put out 3000 damage onto the enemy from that very, very effective flank sniper fire. Now it's time to secure the enemy base. There's nothing holding the base but myself and a Yag Panther, and we know that they at least have a T-34 and a Lerva. You can see the Lerva's on low health and he's very much in the open, so I would be expecting our Hummel to be very effective against him. You can see right here I'm backing up to try and reduce my target profile on the Lerva using the ridge line, and also trying to angle just a little bit so that if he hits my front armor it's uh, more likely to bounce. As you can see my shot at him when he was not visible went in and we managed to kill the Lerva. We're now, uh, we're now on two kills showing 3300 damage but I know for a fact that we've done an additional approximately 300. So we've done about 3600 damage this match so far. And uh, right here I've just taken a side shot from a Pershing who's not detected. So I'm backing off for two reasons. First of all, I don't know where that Pershing is and he knows where I am. Second of all, the MLE-48 has very low health pool and uh, I'm, those two hits, neither one of those were particularly big. And I'm down to 400 health. So I don't want to be getting snipe shot by that Pershing anymore. And I also know that this T-34 is over here somewhere and the Yag Panther is going to need help dealing with him. So their first shot at the T-34, unfortunately, all I hit was his track. Looks like the Pershing put another one into me, 233 damage. Almost certainly the Pershing. But the T-34 actually bounced off my front armor. Now this is bad, I'm detracked, I'm in the open, I've got a Pershing on my side, and the enemy still has two artillery. This is very bad. I do not have a repair crew on this tank either. Now right here what I decide to do is I decide to put a shot or two into this Pershing to get him off my case because I can reload quickly enough with this tank that I feel like firing once at that Pershing and getting him you know maybe a little scared was worth the reload time because I can easily beat the reload of the T-34. You can see right there my front armor was able to bounce the T-34 and I've put another shot in, I put a shot into him, that's my first damaging hit. He stops to fire, he bounces off, I put another shot in through his hull. That's what I meant about the armor on this tank's fur being very troll. Now the T-34 tries to get around beside me, but honestly a T-34 is just not agile enough to flank an ACMLE 1948, even when the 48's in reverse. So I just keep my front onto the T-34 and place a shot through his hull and kill him. I'm now at three kills, 4,600 known damage done, plus another 300 or so to the despawn Lerva. So um, this has been a very good game so far for me. I'm one hittable, and that Pershing looks like he's just trying to get what he can before the battle ends. There are still two artillery, so I'm not safe yet. The Pershing burns to death. That is a very, very good sign. What I'm thinking right now is the enemy artillery, they're both very fast, and our team is actually getting, has been uh, treated pretty hard, we're uh, spread pretty thin. So what I'm thinking is there are two possibilities here. The artillery will try to go tank destroyer mode in their base and just, you know, just defend and kill us. Or the other possibility I'm thinking is those artillery are fast enough that they might run into this field to either try and hide or try and do a backdoor capture. So I am taking my 48, which is also very fast, out into this field to look for to look for artillery who are either running or trying to uh, backdoor cap. You can see the Hummel is coming with me, which is an interesting move. We have an IS-3 pushing up the road and we have our IS in the river. Now there are both the artillery, they're doing exactly what I thought. I'm not sure if they're, I think they were just trying to go for unspotted locations and hide, hide out the rest of the match. But they've been detected, so now they have to engage. I managed to one-shot the Hummel, and my rapid reload means I can reload and finish off the Marine 155-50.
So that's the match over. Uh, five kills, a lot of damage. Got some post-battle results here. We'll take a look at those. So you can see uh, there was some damage done to the Lervo while he wasn't spotted. So 5,287 damage done. That's a very, very good amount of damage. Even for a tier 8 tankster, 5,287 is a lot. Only 203 detection damage, and uh, that was on the Lorraine. Or actually, it was on the Lerva. I, th I thought it was on the Lorraine 155.50 at the very end. You can see I got a Reaper Award, Mastery Badge, First Class. Uh, I don't know if that's Master Gunner or Sharpshooter. Honestly, I don't really care. Confederate and Sniper. Now, getting Confederate and five kills, that's kind of a big deal. That means I was poking a lot of enemy tanks. Two times experience for the first one of the day. 3,476 experience. That's pretty doggone good. That's not too bad at all. And uh, 58,000 credits earned. You can see I made a 20k profit on that match. Not too bad for a tier 8 tank starter. Uh, as you would expect on the team list, my damage was far and away the highest in the match. Double the next closest on our team. KV4 had a good game. Props to him. The enemy Lorraine Artillery and this T-32 and Pershing. These guys all had good games for the enemy team, but unfortunately we had more people who had a better game, and then I had a monster game. So it's not that one team played particularly bad or one team played particularly good. In this case it came down to our team had one guy that played awesome, and their team had zero guys that played awesome. And then our team had... One, two, three, four, five people who played pretty good, and their team had one, two, three, four, five people who played pretty good. So, you know, it was a, a, a very close match all around. As you can see, uh, 27 shots fired. That's a good example of the high rate of fire of this tank. 25 hits shows the accuracy. 22 penetrations. Um, I had uh, one bounce off the where a shot drifted forward and deflected off the mantlet of a T-34, and that's to be expected. One kind of troll bounce off an IS, for, or off an IS, and that's also kind of to be expected. So that's a, that's a rapid-firing, accurate, good penetration gun for a lot of damage done. You can see the armor of the tank was able to keep me alive, even with my 1,000 health pool and terrible side armor. I was able to take 7 hits for 2,200 damage. Um, just a... Just all in all, really, really good match in the 1948. Um, that This tank is a tank that is really good. I, I can't wait to try the uh, 50 Fosh, and I really want to get my hands on a 50 Fosh 155, but that's a really long way down the road. But for now, I think this 48 will, will more, than, more than get the job done. So, uh, Captain Dorja here with Captain Dorja's Armory, and just remember, guys, you can never have enough big guns.